in our presentation now. So we're from the Equity Research Department in the US US. I'm Crystal and uh, this is my teammate Jura. So today we'll be talking to you guys about financial ratios. So yeah. Alright, so the first thing about financial ratios is um, it's part of uh, something called fundamental analysis, which is something you do when you analyze like, uh, stocks. And there are six uh, segments to fundamental analysis. First being at the economy level, you need to look at um, the situation in the economy, recent news, and things like that. And um, then after that, you look at the industry and the sub-industry and the condition of each of these um, elements. And then you move on to the financial ratio screen. So after financial ratio screening, you actually pick a stock and then you move on to the business model management analysis, your valuation and timing of your buy or sell. So now we move on to the first ratios. The first ratios that we'll be covering is price ratios. The first one is uh, price to earnings ratio or PE ratio for short. So to derive PE ratio, right, it's actually just price per share divided by earnings per share. Of course, everything has to be the latest figure. And the second ratio is the uh, earnings per share, or EPS for short, and it is uh, earnings attributable to shareholders minus preference share dividend over weighted average number of shares. So what do these uh, ratios tell us? Firstly, historical PE shows us that, assuming the latest earning continues, how many years it takes the business to earn back your initial investment amount. And comparing to industry peers, a higher PE ratio would mean a higher future earning expectation. So higher PE ratio means better. However, higher PE ratio uh, companies' stock price may also face something called a double whammy when bad news surface. So what does this mean? It means that your earnings drop, your PE ratio drops, and this results in a substantial decrease in your stock price. So the next ratio, we move on to price to book ratio, or PB for short. So what is price to book ratio? It is the price per share divided by the net asset per share. It indicates how much we are paying for per dollar worth of asset after deducting all liabilities. So to use PV ratio in decision making, it is crucial to ascertain the fairness of the company's asset valuation. So first, you check the PPE, uh, plant property and equipment, useful life assumption against industry peers. Next, you check whether there is adequate impairment in the when the company's revenue is dropping, as well as the fair value valuation currently used. So, alternatively, one can use P over tangible book value, elim minus, elim uh, minus intangible assets, which um, eliminates intangible assets. Um, when, a PB, PB, when a PB ratio is less than 1, it indicates a uh, further dependent of assets will occur, which is a lower expectation of future earnings. So the next price ratio that we're going to look at is the dividend payout ratio which is a dividend per share over earnings per share. So what does this do is that it measures the proportion of earnings distributed to shareholders. And when comparing historical payout ratio, it is useful in determining the dividend policy of a company if it is not explicitly stated in the annual report. So although theoretically speaking, it doesn't matter whether the company pays out dividends because you can always create your own kind of dividends by like selling your shares and earning the money. But some, pre some shareholders prefer dividend paying companies because it decreases the risk of management investing excess cash in non-related businesses because you keep less cash. So you can, also, you can also calculate the dividend yield, which is the dividend per share over the share price. But is dividend payout ratio always reliable? So many REITs on uh, SGX actually have high dividend yield and payout ratio, but most of them take back what they distribute to shareholders with the frequent rights issue. So um, you should always look at the company policy before you invest. So now we move on to profitability ratios. The first one is um, return on assets, or RA for short. It is the net income over the total average total asset. So it measures the efficiency of a company in using its asset to generate earnings. The next one we look at is at return on equity, which is your net income over your average stockholder equity. This one measures the efficiency of a company in using money invested to generate earnings. And the last one is profit margin, which is the easiest, which is your net income over your sales, which also measures the amount of revenue to be kept as profits. So now we move on to liquidity ratio. 
The first one is current ratio, which is your current asset over current liability. It shows the company's abil ability to pay back short-term debt varies with the industry, and a higher current ratio does not necessarily mean better liquidity. Quick ratio is actually current asset minus inventory over current liability. This is a more conservative measure compared to current ratio because it removes your current asset uh, inventory. So now we move on to debt ratios. The first one being debt to equity ratio, also known as carrying. It is a total liability over your total shareholder equity. It shows the financing structure and measures how much debt the company raised per dollar of shareholders equity. It's gener uh, generally lower geared companies, which means you have a lower debt to equity ratio. They have lower solvency risk, but this does not mean that it will also have higher performance, so you should always um, be careful. Then the next one is uh, interest coverage ratio, which is your earnings before interest and tax fee and uh, over interest expense. This measures a company's ability to pay interest due using its profits and um, operating cash flow over finance costs to measure liquidity risk if earning quality is low. For companies with large financial leases, fixed charge coverage ratio if it finance costs plus finance lease obligation over finance costs and lease obligation is more suitable. So um, one thing to one thing to ask is can we one thing to ask is, can we only rely on price ratios? So there was a study carried out by Tae Hui Ling, uh, Executive Director of Aggregate Asset Management, to find out what if investors buy 10% of all stocks listed on SGX with only the lowest PE or price to, equity, uh, price to earnings or PB, price to book value ratio. So um, assume these are the assumptions. The portfolio is rebalanced at end of each year with stocks of lowest PE, PB. And the time period of study is from 1990 to 12. So um, this is actually what happens after that, and um, the result is that buying purely on low PB resulted in selecting companies with significant solvency risk. But then again, study was carried out on 10% of all SGX stocks with the lowest PB and PB, and this kind of diversified the risks away. But the moral of the story is. Low PV companies are usually small caps, and it is always better to filter the companies rather than relying solely on price ratios. Now we move on to efficiency ratios, the first being the asset turnover ratio. Asset turnover ratio can be derived by sales over to average total asset. It measures the efficiency in using asset to generate revenue. The next one is inventory turnover ratio, and this one is actually quite important, especially in uh, investments in companies that are like consumer discretionary and such. It is your cost of goods sold over your average industry. This actually kind of shows your company's performance as a low inventory turnover ratio actually shows um, that a company's having poor sales and a high inventory turnover ratio, which means that the company does not have an efficiency inventory planning plan. So um, now that we have covered all the ratios, we are um, going to look at some of the relevant ratios uh, specific to each industry. Um, here there's uh, pharmaceutical, healthcare services, utilities, IT tech and airlines. Um, these slides will be published so you guys can take a look online. So now we move on to the next one, there's telecommunications, oil and gas, banking and retail. So all these are actually the ratios that um, are more relevant to the company, uh, to the companies in these industries and uh, will probably uh, present a better picture of the health of the company when you are looking to invest. So next we move on to stock screening, finding the perfect match. So apart from investing methodology and the ideal stock profile and trading offs, you also want to look at the characteristics of um, the company based on its ratios. So first, you want a cheap company. What does this mean? You want a low PE ratio. The next one, you want high earnings, which is high, e high EPS earnings per share, high asset turnover and high gross margin. Then the next one, you want to have low debt because you don't want a company that owes a lot of money. The next one, you want good liquidity, which means it has high interest coverage and is able to pay off its debts fast. The next one is <coughs> dividends because when you hold on to your shares, you're not getting your money back. Only when you sell your, your shares, then you get your money. So you want to get your money back in the form of dividends if you hold on to your shares. So um, a case example would be uh, aggressive transport infrastructure. Um, so these are actually um, the ratios at a glance for aggressive infrastructure and um, 
you can see some of the ratios that I mentioned earlier on, which is like the profit margin, the operating margin, return on asset, return on equity, P, D, D, that kind of stuff. So these are the things you want to focus on. And if you go online to like maybe just look at a random stock or something, this is on Yahoo Finance. You can also see that uh, the ratios are actually listed. For example, price to, uh, price to earnings and the earnings per share. These two ratios are actually the most commonly seen ratios because um, it kind of just sees whether the company might be undervalued or not, which means it's more worthy to buy. So now I'll pass the time to Jiren, who will be talking about relative valuation. Okay, so thanks, Crystal. So after sharing all the different ratios, right, the, actually the way that we use it, right, usually is for relative valuation. Because let's say if I tell you a stock right now, the PE is like 5, what can you make out of it? You really can't. So you really need to see like how it compares to uh, the different uh, comparables in the industry, like based on uh, the other ratios as well. So ratios can also show your financing structure, like let's say DE, and then it uh, also measures how much debt the company raised as per dollar to shareholders' equity. And uh, generally, lower gap companies have lower solvency risk, but this does not mean they will have higher performance because they might be able to leverage more to get you know, greater returns, and they might not be you know, doing that to their advantage. <coughs> so for instance, right, this is just a simple example. Let's say we have a comparable hot dog stand, which is Joe's Dog, and it was purchased for $1 million several months ago. And if we know that Joe's Dog, right, they generated a EBITDA, which is uh, earnings before like uh, interest, tax, and DNA, of $100,000 in the last 12 months prior to acquisition, then that's an enterprise over an EP over EBITDA ratio of 10x because it's 1 million over 100,000. So if let's say right, we know that our hot dog stand generates uh, you know, EBITDA of 400,000, and using that EV EBITDA ratio, we can actually tell that you know, our company is actually uh, worth run, roughly $4 million now. Yeah. OK, so this is just an example for people who like cars. So, uh, you know, much like buying a stock, you know, cars have like their own uh, sort of ratios of performance. Uh, so it's like how fast it, it accelerates or horsepower and top. And then as you can see, they're quite similar, so their price is also likely quite similar. Alright, so ratios and trends, right? You have to really take note about this, its relativity against company itself and against the industry competitors. It, analyzing ratios over time will often give a much clearer picture about a company's position and trajectory. So actually, besides uh, using relative valuation, right? For instance, if you look at a company and it's traditionally trading at PE of 10, and then all of a sudden it shoots up, right? It kind of tells you that oh, maybe like the market is pricing in for future earnings because now it's suddenly the, the share price is going up so high compared to its earnings. And then uh, similarly, if it's going down, then maybe you can tell that the market kind of knows that this company is not going to do well in the near future. So ratios also help to raise important questions and help in understanding the story of the stock. Okay, so now I'll just do a case study. Let's say you're an investor and then you, you, you want to invest in SGX, right? So you go online and you look at uh, some, of the, some of the websites, uh, and then you see that, okay, this stock, China Aviation Oil, has been getting a bit of buzz and people are saying that it's a buy call. So now you want to know, like, what does China Aviation Oil do? And then we kind of chose this stock because it's in the oil and gas. And uh, I think it's safe to assume that most people here are not experts at oil and gas, right? So you wouldn't really know what the ratios mean. So now, I'll teach you all like, roughly how to do an easy relative valuation. Okay, so first step right, is picking our peers. So firstly, we find out a little bit more about what China Aviation Oil does. We know that their market cap is about 1.2 billion SGD. Their, their operations is actually in jet fuel trading. And then their key regions are China and APEC. And their, they, the competitive advantage about this company is that it's actually the sole importer of jet fuel to China. So when choosing comparables, right, like you wouldn't choose something like ExxonMobil, even though it's in oil and gas as well, because its uh, market cap is so much larger and its operations are very diversified. So in a sense, right, it wouldn't provide a clear picture uh, as compared to China Aviation Oil. Okay, so this is actually pulled from Bloomberg, right? These are about about ten companies that have very similar like operations as well as market size as compared to China Aviation Oil. So you guys might think that you all don't have the time to do this, right? But it's actually very fast. If you go on Bloomberg, right, you can learn this, like probably learn it online. It takes about five minutes to do this. And you can get like a lot more issues than this, but I'm just showing you some. So Bloomberg right, will auto-generate an uh, algorithm that helps you find companies of similar size and operations that uh, and then after it will generate all the ratios for you. So the first step in doing this, right, is actually okay, so as you can see, right, the average P is about 22 times and the EV to EV is about 12 times. So as compared to China Aviation Oil, right, it's a bit undervalued. But uh, in this case, right, I would actually like to point your attention to this company called Cross America Partner. 
which is right below China Aviation Oil. As you all can see, right, E and EB beta, right, is very, very high. So it's actually an outlier. So you might want to remove it and then to normalize, oh, sorry, the cost is a bit. Yeah, but if you all remove it, right, you realize that the average drops by quite a lot. So now China Aviation Oil doesn't seem as undervalued as compared to the industry average. Lah. So the first step would be to take out all the outliers. So those might have like a weird story. Lah. Yeah. Okay, so let's say you, you look at PE and DB and you're thinking, okay, this is not bad. This looks undervalued, right? So the next step, right, probably you want to look at like the liquidity. So you can look at some of the current ratios and quick ratios. And looking at it versus the average, right, it's quite safe. And its current ratios are all above one, which means it doesn't really have any solvency risk. Lah. So it's quite, quite a safe investment. And it won't go up like soy butter. So uh, it has low liquidity risk. As compared to a company like Pakistan State Oil, if you see its cash ratio is only 0 0.02, which means its current cash versus its like current liabilities, right, is very, very low, and it might it might go up. And also like the leverage is quite high, about three times that liquidity. So this might represent like high liquidity risk. Alright, so actually, right, if you're you don't really know what China Aviation Oil does, but that they actually do like jet fuel trading. So what matters to them, right, is actually margins. Because they do trading, so they just buy and sell. Their main cost is COGS. So gross margins and EV margins, right, are really how they make their money. So in this sense, right, even though for oil and gas, there might be other relevant ratios, when you come to jet fuel trading, right, it's more of these ratios. So when we look at it, right, we can actually see that China Aviation Oil is not doing that well as compared to the market, and that might be why its PE is low. So now, right, given that there's sort of a red flag to investment, but you should also understand that these uh, these ratios, right, they are usually calculated uh, either trading 12 months or last 12 months, like based on their last year. So it might not be that accurate because it might be almost like nine months or 10 months ago. All right. So actually, right, uh, all these numbers, right, I pulled is accurate as of December. Uh, actually, China Aviation Oil is not bad. And then it actually went up 14% since now. Uh, because I was doing a small picture, so I used this company, yeah. Okay, so actually the preliminary takeaways, right, just after looking at relative valuation, is that it might seem undervalued as compared to the industry just based on PE and EV beta ratios. And China Aviation Oil is operating at healthy leverage and liquidity ratios, so there isn't really a solvency risk. And then uh, actually if you take a look at their company, right, because after their AR, right, they actually released three quarters of financial results. So the next results set to release is the fourth quarter, which will be into their AR. So actually the margins right year on year have been increasing about two times. So that might actually you know, be a signal that the company might be gonna, as in the share price might go up very soon. And then the market uh, has kind of priced in a bit in anticipation of the earnings release, which is why the, the share price has been going up uh, recently. As you can see like from the line to now it's about 14% increase. Okay, so the limitations of relative valuation, right, it's very simple. Basically, no two companies are the same. So as you look, even like when you consider something like the hot dog stand as an example, right, it's actually, you know, you can't really say that the two, the two companies are the same, even though they both sell hot dogs. Because one might have a better positioning, one might have like more fixed customers, one might be like in China, one might be in the US. So even for something as simple as hot dogs, right, you can see that there are so many differences. And you think about a company like a jet fuel trading company, there will be like a million differences. So even though it's like they are about the same, they are not really the same. So there are many differences between the companies. Uh. So they only give you a gauge, but not an exact figure. And then also ratios are a snapshot, as I mentioned. Uh, a lot of the figures are calculated based on like uh, like last annual report, or maybe some are trading job months. So it's just a snapshot, and sometimes it's a bit past, and it may not be indicative of the future. And then also, if you look at forward ratios, right, they're all analyst estimates. So they're not fixed. La. Even though the forward ratios may look good, right, they might not, the company may not, may not perform to hit those uh, estimates. And then also, right, ratios are not usually catalysts for rebounds. That means, for instance, if you see a low PE, let's say even it's three times, right, it doesn't mean the company share price will go up anytime soon. Usually it needs a more solid reason, like maybe it signs a big contract with another company for the company to, for the share price to go up. So like a low ratio does not mean that it's going to go up anytime soon. It just shows that the company might be undervalued. But how long the market takes to correct it might be like undetermined. Uh, cannot determine based on the ratios. And so our final conclusions is that actually financial ratios are very useful throughout different stages of fundamental analysis. 